Rings of Power, which we all loved. It was uh, a real hit uh, when it first came out. But they have a part, they have wrapped production on season two, or so they claim. And that was way back in, I think, September, October of last year. Now, we, we still haven't seen anything even resembling a trailer, and there's no mm. indication of when it's going to come out. And it's fueling rumors that the season has been delayed. They're probably going to make the argument that it was because of the strikes and so on, but it wasn't because they were able to wrap filming successfully. They got everything that they needed. And the the current crop of rumors that are now doing the rounds is that uh, they're actually going to reshoot large portions of this and remake it. Uh, the showrunners, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, have apparently been demoted in the interim. Like between seasons one and two, they've been demoted um, from showrunners to like consulting producers or whatever the ridiculous term is. Yeah, it, pretty much. Um, and so the question mark that's hanging over this show now is what are they going to do with it? Um, are they going to delay it? Are they going to like try and salvage something from this show? Um, because everything that we're hearing so far just. Um, leaves a, a giant question over what is even going on with it. This is a billion dollar show, everyone. From what I remember, season one came out in September of 2022, so I don't know if they are going to effectively just hold it until roughly the same time for each year of release. That might just be the simplest explanation, is that that's the release window they've got down, because that's the one they went with last time, and the market research told them that that would have been the best time to do it. Um, but against that, you can find interviews where they say that they think it's very important that we have as minimal a gap between seasons as possible, so speed is, is of the essence. Um, and if they've already finished filming, then yeah, waiting till September, if you also want to be quick, doesn't really add up. Um, I don't know, I, I've not seen very much about this, except that I keep an eye on the analytics for my Rings of Power videos, and so when they start ticking up again, because Amazon is spending hundreds of millions of pounds on YouTube advertisements, then I'll know it's coming. It's like getting it in the water, <laughs> or the wind. Yeah. Um... No, I mean, I, I ask about this because, yeah, there seems to be rumors doing the rounds that uh, th this season has been a troubled one. And they kind of recognize the problems that they had with the first season, and they are trying to correct it because the backlash that we saw to season one was immense. And it was kind of admirable in a lot of ways because you can't even make the argument really that it was a divisive show it seems like pretty much everyone thought it was garbage and so it almost united the lord of the rings fandom in their con their condemnation we, of it we covered someone who loved it apparently right drinker in the every in, in encompassing their entire praise of the show they were like cg wow that was great the cg was so good <laughs> special effects yes the cg was great. wow yeah. yeah, so it's great. <laughs> we were like, because oh, CG. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you want to talk about the writing? It's just like, no. <laughs> because we've we've had trailers for season two of um, oh, House of the Dragon. Sorry, the name escaped me there. So it just um. You've essentially got two shows that are roughly contemporary with each other, but one seems to have progressed so much better than the other. And with a fraction of the publicity as well. I remember that's the nice thing about House of the Dragon season one is that it didn't it didn't come out of completely nowhere. I did see the occasional advertisement for it, say on the tube in London or on the television, but not very much, and I didn't know a huge amount about it. And it didn't seem to have a huge amount of fanfare when it did first launch. And obviously coming off the back of the disaster of Game of Thrones season eight, had a lot of making up to do. But it made up for it almost immediately and then spread rapidly through word of mouth, which is always going to be way cheaper than Amazon's marketing budget is, um, which seems to be spent principally on trying to take down YouTube videos which are critical of your work. Uh, but it was nice to see the counterpoint. Here is a, a faithful and well-written fantasy adaptation, um, which had very little by way of support comparatively, and it's just blown up and everyone loves it, versus Rings of Power, which comes out contemporaneously with loads of money, huge budgets, all the publicity, everything you ever ordered from Amazon has an advert for Rings of Power, and it's fucking shit, and it deserves the failure that it got. And so, a horse died. They, and a horse died. If, they, if they're sensible, they will, they will take a look at House of the Dragon and try and learn what it was that made that quite as popular as it, as it became, but they're not sensible because they're Amazon and they have too much money. Well, I, mean, yeah, I think if, you were, if there were suddenly... 
Yeah, if you were suddenly put in charge of this show, um, coming into it with season two, like after the reception of season one, you know, what could you potentially do to try and salvage this? Like, um, I feel like it's an unwinnable situation because the the public perception of it is so negative. I don't know how you could redeem yourself in their in their eyes. There are two two ways you could. Sorry, go ahead, Mister Brown. I was going to say, uh, main way is to uh, raise the uh, subscription fee by three pounds to pay for the series. I'll do yeah, it. I mean, you could do that, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's Amazon. Two... Amazon's not short on money. Uh, yeah, that's the crazy do... thing about it, yeah. You could do two ways. You could Basically, you could do it, um, and I think this is what they have to do, because they, they didn't scrap it and start over, which is, so that, that option's gone. So they can either do... If they're going to do it well, they would need to do it lore accurate. So you move forward and bearing in mind that the lore has already been trashed, but you kind of try to get it back on track and get it lore accurate, or you just take it off in its own direction and, and just it's, it's its own thing now. We're not even going to try to, to keep it accurate to Tolkien's world. It's, it's just its own series, and we're going to write it the way we want to write it. Now, if I was an Amazon, that's the way I would do it, because I think Humpty Dumpty's broken and you're not going to put him back together again. I think that's how it is with lore. So I would just make it its own show completely and write uh, on the basis of what is uh, best. Yeah. They I think they'd really, I really, would, really struggle with be that, in. because season one already effectively did that. Season one has the problem of attempting, or it claims it sells itself on the basis that it is an adaptation of Tolkien's work, but really it's not. It, it breaks the lore. It does already go off in its own direction, and there is no way of pulling that back, even as season two moves into areas where they have more of the rights to the backstory material. But I, I sometimes think that that's not as big a deal as people like you and I probably think that it is, because obviously, you know, if you're a fan of Tolkien, lots of people on the internet, lots of YouTubers are big fans. We've read the books, we've watched the films, we know all this stuff, we care about the lore, but we're not, I don't think the majority of viewers or even potential viewers for a Rings of Power show. Rings of Power season one didn't fail because or just because it did such a terrible job as an adaptation. It failed because it was tedious and badly written on its own terms. So even people with no familiarity with the law had no reason to stick around, as I think only about 30% of them did. It, it, it's a bad show for all of the reasons. The law breaks are pretty egregious, absolutely. But it's just a bad show as well because they have no ability to write a coherent script and the actors are terrible and the dialogue's embarrassing and even if you did take it off in its own direction with no regard to the law that's not going to change unless you completely change the backroom team well i think the important thing is to establish a creative framework so for example one of the reasons season one failed whereas for example the lord of the rings by jackson succeeded is because everyone knew what they were supposed to be doing with jackson's lord of the rings his mission statement was quite simple we just want to make it as accurate to the book as is cinematically possible and we want to you know, make it for Tolkien. That's a very clear mission statement. It's a very clear uh, creative framework that everyone can understand. But Rings of Power is very confused. If you're involved in that production, you're not sure, is this supposed to be related to the books? Are we doing our own thing here? Everyone's kind of confused. And because there's no real creative framework there, you end up with just like an absolute mess. So for the, the writers, even, even down to the production and the costume designers, what exactly are they working off? I think... You, before you do anything else, you first need to establish, is this, are we working from the text here or are we just doing our own thing? And everyone should know that so that they know exactly what they're supposed to do in the production. I think even it, like even whether you're going to do your own thing or whether you're going to be slavishly devoted to the text as much as you can be, there's a general level of just basic quality that you would strive for, whether it's like, something as simple as the costume design uh, and actually making it seem like they're wearing real suits of armor um, or the writing of the characters, giving them dialogue that real, like, believable humans or, or whatever would actually say, um, or giving you a, a plot that unfolds in a, a way that seems logically consistent and emotionally and dramatically satisfying. Those are all things that you can do regardless of whether or not you're going to stick to the lore. It's just a basic level of, like, quality. I suppose, and they don't even adhere to that. And, and then this they have is a, a show. to lead by saying, we're going to write the story that Tolkien never could. Yeah, <laughs> that went well. Yeah. And it just seemed natural that uh, this show, which is about a fantasy world, thousands of years before our own existence, should reflect the world that we live in today. <laughs> of course it should, yeah. Because the... But also it's kind yeah. of a prequel to the Jackson films, meaning that all the diverse cast have to at some point be genocided between the end of Rings of Power and the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that'll be fun to watch if they ever get around to that. I mean, the Harfoots would definitely do it because they love fucking love killing people. 
I would love to see the scene where the Harfords just get wiped out. <laughs> I would watch it just to see that. But like they haven't created a show that people are invested in. They've created memes. That's all it is. It's like things that people like to hate on and uh, and mock because they're so dumb. That's what this show is. I mean, the that's other... a hell of a legacy to leave behind you. Where do you go from? I mean, does it have any compelling characters or likable characters that people would like to see on screen again that you could kind of use as a springboard into me. a better season two? <laughs> I was I was fully on board with Halbrand. I, I I want him to win. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see old man Waldrick make some more landmarks in, uh, in the Lord Rings universe. <laughs> he turns the key in the floor to unlock the dam to release the water that sets off Mount Doom. And just in case you missed it, they have the little sign in the top left corner. They renamed the town. It's now officially called Mordor. You can yeah. go make Minas Morgul. He can go over there and turn a key. I, I just want one of his adventures. <laughs> I just want Galadriel just bragging about how she killed an ice troll in under 10 seconds. <laughs> just like, constantly going on about it. I mean, it's, it's th always it's set up for failure anyway, though, because it is still an adaptation, even if you do, as season one unofficially did, but season two will also have to do, even if you do take it off in a completely random direction that barely corresponds with anything that anyone's ever read before. It is still supposed to be an adaptation. They did spend a billion dollars trying to get the rights to the appendices of the books. And so they're using the character names, they're using the place names, they're using a number of recognizable things, which always would invite the comparison with the thing that they are adapting, or even the thing that they are spinning off from. If you look at Rings of Power and you say, well, what is Galadriel's character arc versus the arc that you get in her chapters of the Silmarillion, you're always going to look at unfavorably upon the adaptation because they've done such a terrible job by comparison. It, it's never going to live up to it. It's always going to be a memeable entity just for how shallow and cheap it is compared to the richness of the thing that they've tried to adapt. Well, you're missing the point here, Platoon, because the real selling point of season two is that we're going to have all female directors for every oh, episode. Oh, good. That will because fix that's, it. Because that's a sure mark of quality when you just pick people based on their arbitrary characteristics <laughs> they were born with rather than their actual talent or abilities. So, yeah, sure. And do they um, all have Tempest in least... them as well? Or is that just reserved for Galadriel? Only for one week per month do they have that Tempest in them. <laughs> you know, even if they do improve it, and I expect season two will be better than season one because it would be very difficult to make a season of television as bad as Rings of Power season one again. Just mathematically, that's unlikely. Oh, so you underestimate probably... them this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if they've fired the showrunners, you're very inexperienced. And like you said, a lot of the show being shit does come down to just bad writing. Um, for example, Galadriel's a very poorly written character. Here's a very basic one. This is like eight hours of TV, and it has one battle that doesn't really make sense fought over some shit heap mud village that no one cares about. Like, that is astounding incompetence. How did that get greenlit? Like, you, you bring a script, a massive script, eight hours long, into a studio executive, and he says... Well, you've got, I see you've got a battle scene at the end of this. Yeah, let's green like that. Like, that's just, this is supposed to be like war fantasy. There should be a lot more war and action and battles in it than that. So from a very basic competence perspective, it's terrible. So of course, season two is going to be better. It would have to be better, especially if they've hired new showrunners. But even if it is better, it's still just going to be mediocre and kind of shit. There's, there's, you can only improve this so much because the foundation is so rotten. There's only so much you can do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think honestly, like I love your optimism and I hope you're right, but I, <laughs> I think uh, you'd be surprised by how much further they can sink in terms of like their actual creative output, the artistic yeah. merit of what they produce. Uh, particularly when you bring new people into a show which is already up and running and you're committed to a, a course of action narratively um, and you're stuck with the actors essentially they're not going to get any better at what they do um and you've got your all-female directing team like none of these things are really in like recommending themselves to the idea that this is going to be an improvement on season one i think you're just going to see more of the same really if not there's, worse there's more risk as well because uh, at least well I, I would imagine this is what they will do this one will actually front and center sauron a lot more than season one did with a lot more agency he will effectively be the mastermind they cast um his his anatar form anatar the gift giver who looks a bit like tech support sauron from the, the casting decision but you know it was a choice uh, he's the one who is supposed to trick the elves into, or try to trick the elves and all of the free peoples into taking the rings of power. 
um, which if they do follow that storyline and they've cast the character, so I imagine they will, that means that he's effectively got to mastermind all of the, the nefarious operations behind the scenes. So they have to write a really competent villain. Hmm. And I, uh, I've got Admiral Thrawn flashbacks already. I'm sure they'll turn yeah. into a character like that. 